Good morning. My name is Willie Davis. I am the HAZMAT Program Leader, Environmental Affairs here at HEB. I would like to welcome you to the opportunity of working at our retail support centers. One of the things that I want to make you aware of is our process safety management program. It involves chemicals that are stored at a specified threshold quantity of 10,000 pounds. Here at HEB, anhydrous ammonia fits that criteria. The purpose of our process safety management program is to prevent or minimize the consequences of a catastrophic release of this toxic chemical. As a contractor, you need to ensure that all of your employees are aware of emergency notifications and evacuation requirements. This should be done prior to the start of your projects. Working at our facilities, you may encounter a chemical spill. Prevention, assessment, reporting and cleanup are critical to ensure that we provide and you are afforded the opportunity to have a safe work environment. The objectives of our chemical spill program is to create an awareness of the state and federal regulations, OSHA and EPA, that affect spill cleanup. I'm going to explain today your responsibilities and I'm going to help provide you with some strategies to prevent spills, how to report the spills, and most importantly, how to clean them up whenever it's appropriate. The OSHA regulation 1910-120, which deals with hazardous waste operations and emergency response, will be our guideline that we follow. It gives very specific training and procedures that are mandatory for reporting and responding to chemical spills that are considered a hazardous material incident. A hazardous material spill is one where there is an immediate danger to the life and health of your employees and our partners. Most small spills are not considered to be hazardous material incidents, but at HEB, we treat them as though they are. Now, there are numerous other EPA regulations that control hazardous waste, but we're going to focus on the 1910-120 standard hazardous waste operations. Contractors are responsible for ensuring spills are reported and cleaned up in a timely manner. Cleaning up these nuisance spills of these materials in your particular area is very important, even if someone else is the generator of the spill. Knowing the properties of the material that you are working with is extremely important. Taking reasonable steps to prevent spills is critical. Here at HEB, we do have a hazmat response team that will assist you if you're not comfortable with cleaning up the spill that are in your area. It is important, though, that HEB is aware of any chemicals being used or brought on site prior to the beginning of your work. We would also like for you to provide us a copy of the material safety data sheets. Cleanup of serious hazmat spills, our hazmat team will handle those. Preventing spills. The one thing that you all can do as contractors to help prevent spills is to eliminate clutter. Know the proper work practices for biological and chemical materials that you use. Bloodborne pathogens, what are the procedures to handle those? Use unbreakable secondary containers. Store chemicals properly. And most importantly, dispose of waste and excess chemicals in a timely manner. In preparation to beginning your work, you need to understand and have your employees understand what are the physical properties of the chemicals that you are going to use. And then ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen if you were to drop or spill a bottle of each chemical in your use? Think about the inconvenience of your work area, of your project. What about food safety? Skin burns on your employees or our partners. The potential for fire. Chemical exposure to your employees, which could be fatal or cause permanent injury. Some other hazards that you need to take into consideration are the toxicity of the product. Is it flammable? 
Is it a caustic? Is it reactive or explosive? Or are there other hazards that are associated with this product if it were to mix with other chemicals in the area? Remember, you are the expert on the hazards of materials in your possession. Know the properties of the chemicals that you use before you handle them. Know what the appropriate work practices are and use them to include the wearing of protective equipment. It is your responsibility as a contractor to provide the PPE necessary for your partners to have a safe work environment. Know what the worst case scenario is for a spill of a chemical that you're going to use. Think about how you will react to a spill if the materials you use were to be spilled at your job site. Know what the appropriate cleanup procedures are for the materials. Remember, you're going to generate waste. What is waste? Well, waste is a material that can no longer be used for its intended purpose. As generators, we are responsible for all steps of waste management, from the point of generation to the final disposal, cradle to grave. Now, for further instructions on waste management, please review our Corporate Contractor Safety Manual. Remember, HEBNU may be responsible for any mismanagement of waste even after the waste has left the facility. There are specific requirements for waste generators. We must conduct waste generation determinations. This is determining whether the waste is a hazardous waste or a non-hazardous waste. This will include proper handling, proper containers, correct labeling, proper disposal, and most importantly, the proper storage in waiting transportation. Training of your personnel is another critical step in waste management. Ensure that there is going to be a manifest, a bill of lading must be received from the waste haulers, and then this waste documentation must be readily available for review during an HEB audit of your particular company. If you were to have a chemical spill, each facility will brief you on the evacuation procedures prior to your company beginning your work. This will include the alarms and the notification procedures. Attend to injured or contaminated persons and remove them from the contaminated exposure area if you can do so without endangering yourself. Alert persons in the immediate area to evacuate. If spill material is flammable, turn off all ignition sources. Close doors to the affected area. And have a person knowledgeable of the incident and the work area assist our HAZMAT partners with information as to what has taken place so that they can correctly respond to your chemical spill incident. This is a map of our evacuation rally points. Depending on which facility that you will be working at, they will assign you which one that you will report to depending on the wind direction. Also, we may have to shelter in place. That's why it is important that you coordinate with the facility operator prior to starting your work to find out what the requirements will be for evacuation or shelter in place. One of the things, because we are a process safety covered uh, facility, hot work permits must be issued for your operations. Because they're going to be conducted on or near this process covered facility, authorization should be preceded by site inspection and designation of appropriate precautions. Contractors have to be advised about all of our permitting programs, confined space, lockout tagout, and hot work. Stormwater. We want to minimize outside exposure. Anything that could come in contact with stormwater, be it metal, trash, diesel, oil, acid, flour, etc. These things must be covered and stored properly. Your areas must be cleaned daily. Spills and releases must be quickly cleaned up. 
and equipment that you're going to be utilizing must be maintained so that no leaks are visible. Storm drains must be kept free of all debris. Here at HEB, our environmental affairs, we have been tasked with a company-wide environmental support system to support you and our partners. We will implement regulatory guidance. We have a pollution prevention and recycling support and also any assistance with regulatory agencies. In summary, the initial notifications and alarms are critical. Internal and external communications ensure that you know the contacts at your work facility. Quick and orderly evacuation to your rally points will be based on the wind direction. Follow instructions. Accurate head counts are critical we have the responsibility to account for every person. So ensure that your personnel are accounted for. Don't just release them. An accurate and detailed spill and release information is important for our first responders. Being prepared is the key. Remember, accidents are not planned, they happen. You need to also know the properties of all the hazardous materials that you're going to handle. Prevention of spills is critical. If a potentially hazardous spill does occur, protect your people first. Evacuate and ask for help. Call the HAZMAT team for emergency spill assistance at area code 210-938-8500. This is a 24-hour number. Call your safety contacts to report safety hazards and non-emergency assistance at 1-800-432-6334. Remember, 